Club going up on a Tuesday. We're going to catch up on some NFL free agency, hear how Andy's auto drafting experience has been going in the big board, as well as his uh, salary cap games over on IKB. And then we'll transition to some hoops. I think it's about time we hop in another NBA playoff draft. And I know we also got a five game slate tonight up on Underdog. So we'll maybe do a daily and, of course, build a pick 'em. It's Pete, Andy, and Clay here in the club. Let's do it. B Spurf B Spurf noticed the uh the joke I was going for on on the thumbnail. Clay, I'm shocked that you as a, a man of NBA culture didn't pick up on this. Uh you know what? It's uh I'm clearly off my game. Uh <laughs> I, I, you know, once once I got locked in though, I got it. Uh but yeah, I, I wasn't I wasn't there originally. Um but I'm I'm proud of you. You you were in it for sure. You were in the streets. Yeah, for people who don't know, what was it? Uh, I, I don't know if I want to uh, just search Black Dick in the Twitter bar to get it to pull up. So maybe I search. <laughs> I bet you will. Well, it's called uh, X.com. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, here. So here's the photo. Who Who's this guy? Okay, Anthony Black. Anthony Black, Dick, yeah. Jersey swap. And so they're, the both, they're, they're both rookies, and Anthony Black was like a top 10 pick. Okay. Yeah. And Grady Dick's a fascinating kid. I mean, does not look like a hooper balled out at Kansas, right? Is is he having a good rookie year? Not really, but he's not getting a ton. Like, he's, yeah. he's starting to get a little bit of run uh, now that Toronto's like fully tanking. He for yeah. the most of the season, he just hasn't played that much. Yeah. Uh, the the best part is just like no like how do you think the sausage uh, bad pun uh, got me here? <laughs> hey, oh. You think they were messaging about this? Like clearly someone was in their mentions like referencing. Have these guys been doing jersey swaps or like how do you guys think this came about? Well, did Boy, you watch that... the video of it going down? I've, because I've, when I they think... when they realize they're going to do it, they intentionally switch sides. As it's shooting over. <laughs> oh, okay. So they start out there on the opposite side. The pre -play. Anthony Black goes yeah. away and comes back, so that way he's on the right side. So he no, he's like going wow. to get the team photographer right here. See, he goes, he goes and gets the guy, calls him over, little photo off, and then oop oop oop, we'll switch to Ernie. <laughs> then wait for the smirks. Just. <laughs> <laughs> He looks so down. good. They're just so satisfied. <laughs> so <laughs> oh man, this is why like the the NFL can never compete with the NBA on like a culture thing. Like this would just never happen uh, with two like NFL guys giggling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's no, like the closest I can think about the for this roof, is right. like Tyree Kill doing like the backflip with the guy's phone, and he got they get in trouble for it. Oh man, it's crazy. Uh, what a uh, how have you guys been? What else is uh, catching your eye in the uh, the NBA streets these days? Pretty good. I had a I've had a, a good couple weeks. I I took down a first place recently, which was nice. Um, oh yeah, some more bankroll. Um, but it's it's an interesting time in the NBA, like this period, because you like can kind of tell who is trying, who's not trying, who's intentionally trying to lose who really needs to win. And so you can kind of like IKB more than you would at a lot of other points in the season when it comes to fantasy. For example, like last night, Anthony Davis was questionable. He had left the previous game with an eye injury. He got like hit in the eye and it was swollen. And it's one of those things where it's like, he just hurt his eye. Like he's, he's fine. And the Lakers have to win every game they're playing. Like he's going to play. And so on underdog, you were able to draft him. He was by far the number one player on the uh, on the board that day, but you were able to draft him at pick four sometimes even. Um, yeah. and so there's a lot of instances like that where if you kind of are following and know who needs to be playing and all that, you can kind of potentially get an extra advantage for yourself outside of the projections and stuff. Have, uh, have you noticed the, are the contests getting harder as the season progresses Is the field of play um, better right now? I feel like they're getting easier actually. Really? Um, yeah, I think like I think most of the people who are sharp and we're going to play are playing already or, or were playing. I had a really hard time in the middle of the season. I 
for like all of January, I just got slaughtered just before all star break. Um, projections just like were never panning out the way I expected and stuff. Um, but I think, like I was saying, coming into this period of time, there's a little bit more nuance. Uh, and it also starts to get even heavier on the projection side, especially going into the playoffs, because there's so much more that's known. Yeah. And so you're just like getting rid of a lot of the, the unknowns. Um, and so that that's where I've found my like most profitable times is where I'm not having to play guessing games or this guy gets way less minutes than I expected or something. And when you can really just like trust your projections and trust the numbers, that's at least for how I play, that's what's easiest because I'm, I'm not like going in and hand building everything. I'm just kind of trusting the numbers to do what I expect them to do. And when it's like total chaos in the middle of the season, because everyone's just randomly resting and they don't care if they win or lose. And they're thinking about all-star break. That's, that's when I had the most trouble. And th so yeah, obviously that makes sense that the projections are getting better with more info, but are the ADPs not proportionally getting more efficient as well? I think the ADPs for the last like week or so have been some of the worst weeks of ADPs that I've seen all season, actually. Really? I've been like, yeah, like I literally had someone DM me earlier today who he does a uh, shout out to, I think his, I'm not sure exactly what his handle is on, uh, on underdog, but he goes by, he's the wood 1105 on discord. Um, he does a ton of stats stuff now. Like he's, he's helped me actually with a lot of the like Chrome bots and he's just made way better versions than, than what I had made originally, um, for like scraping data and stuff. And he literally messaged me last or this morning after last night was like, have you changed your strategy? Because my mm. my drafting was so aggressive versus what it normally was, and I was like, no, ADP has just been so bad comparatively to my projections that I've it's made me way more aggressive in my exposures. Do you think there's uh, any a macro trend that can account for why that's happening? I think it's uh, like over. I think ADP a lot of times is like at the start of the day set by people who are not doing their own projections because it just takes time to do every day. Like I, it's really hard for me. And some of the stuff that I use has been, it doesn't really update until the morning of the games. Like, yeah. uh, like I have a really automated system for bringing in the spreads and fantasy points per minute and fantasy points per minute over the last however many games. And that's just, I updated it every morning. And like some of that stuff just doesn't exist yet when I, if I want to make projections the night before. Um, and so I think people are just generally box score watching a little bit more and kind of just going based on who played well or whatever. Um, and so I think that that's a part of it. And so like there just have been very large discrepancies a few times, uh, especially with particular instances where someone like Anthony Edwards, for someone who's like super fun, he's a really fun player to watch. Carl Anthony Towns is out. So you kind of like put build a world in your head of like, oh, he's going to be a smash because he's the, the main guy now. There's no one else on offense. And he's done well, but like he doesn't almost ever project as well as his ADP is. And so he's a guy where I just basically every single day I have less Anthony Edwards in the field. Um, and yeah. there's just been a lot of instances like that lately. Yeah. People are terrible at IK being for silly season. Uh, although Ashton says he's been getting blasted in underdog hoops. Clay, have you been uh, dabbling in any of the NBA fantasy arts little, it's like slate by slate specific for, for me at the moment. Um, going to throw a few in tonight on the daily front, uh, I think, but you can also been keeping an eye on, I've had one, uh, best ball regular oh, season nice. team still in the mix, but it's petering out. So, uh, we're, yeah, I think it's our last, our last bit of dribbling here in the double dribble, uh, unfortunately. Um, and then a little bit on redacted every now and then, but, uh, I didn't yeah. touch that until after the All Star break, which was nice. Um, but a few of these slates has been a little tempting to kind of, you know, get in there and mix around while I'm still keep attracting the news pretty closely. What's your What's your favorite storyline uh, or plot to track in the NBA right now? I think I mean I'd say still just shape like how uh, the playoff pitcher is shaping up. Um, to be honest, but some of these injuries are a little bit. Uh, the biggest thing I would say, like, you know, Curry getting hurt, kind of coming back, how the Lakers are managing their injury stuff. You know, Luke is popping up, Giannis popping up with stuff. So, um, that's, I wouldn't say there's anything too, too spicy at the moment, but yeah, the 
those those player injuries are the ones that are really top of mind for me. Andy, if it's uh, I asked this question to Mike Zakarian the other day uh, as well. Nuggets versus Celtics final. Who wins? I think the Nuggets will uh, in that situation. I just the Nuggets are so good, um, and the Celtics are as well. But I, I don't know. I, I think I'm kind of in a in a place after watching them crush people nightly, where it's just until they get really pushed in a playoff series, I'll believe it when I see it. I kind of if it feels to me like kind of how not that they're the same level as the Warriors were or anything, um, but. I don't know. I just think that they're Jokic is just so good that it's hard to imagine someone being better than him for a seven game series. And typically I like picking the best player on the best team to be the favorites. Does because right now what what's that, Clay? Nuggets kind of feel like the Chiefs. Like they're so good. Everyone kind of like has them like wants to write them off, but you can't. It's like you can't can't bet against Mahomes can't bet against joker right now yeah because yeah. they're still i mean how much would it swing because right now they're like neck and neck with the top three teams thunder wolves uh as far as for the record if they did get the three seed how do you think that lack of home court advantage in the potential western conference finals could come back to bite them so i think potentially but it's a bit of an interesting thing this year where the two teams who are ahead of them in the Thunder and the Timberwolves, uh, I think even if the Nuggets are the away team in that series, they will be the favorites in that series. Um, the Thunder, who are currently the one seed, are just young. People don't really believe in them to make a, a run. They're the second youngest team in the league. And so, and they don't have a ton of playoff experience. So I think that there's kind of this, I'll believe it when I see it. Um, and then the Timberwolves, who I actually think do match up really nicely against the Nuggets, all things, you know, as, as well as you can. And they gave them a, hard, a decently hard time in their playoff series last year. Would theoretically be a tough matchup, but losing Carl Anthony Towns, I think, could be hard for them. They have, they've actually played pretty well without him, but um, I think, you know, it's, it's, they lost their second or third best player, depending on how good you think he is um, for the season. It's a hard one to to get past. So I think it definitely is a negative, but I, given those two teams and where they're at and who they are, um, I think the Thunder would, or the uh, Nuggets would definitely still be favorites. Clay, uh, I'm going to pull up the odds here for the NBA championship. Boston Celtics plus 220, Nuggets plus 310, Clippers plus 550, Bucks plus 700, Thunder uh, jump all the way to 1900, Suns 2400, Heat 3200. Mavs 3,200, and Timberwolves 3,200, plus 3,200. What is the the most fun? If you were going to do a little sprinkle, you know, not just wrapping the condom on, but having a little fun, what's what's the pick here? Oh, I mean, if you're like... I'm going, I'm going Timberwolves. I was going to say, paralyzed. I was trying to lead you to the Timberwolves. I'm going Timberwolves. Yeah, I mean they're definitely the most fun because I was like realistically like you could you could you know make the argument with like defensively that could be built to like handle a playoff series against uh you know a majority of the teams that would have a chance. Um, they you know been great out defense great defensively like all season long, and they got the offensive power like it just and it could go beast mode is a great storyline. So that's the one where it's like you know the odds are high enough, and they're they're a far enough out dart throw that like you know you would have a little bit extra riding on it than just, let's say, laying it up with a nugget, so to speak. But, um, yeah, Timberwolves for sure. Could you scroll down a little more? I want to see what the last couple yeah. of teams are. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. You can always get me to scroll the F down, Andy. <laughs> Check out the video on the Deposit King so, YouTube channel. The Lakers. That was bro. a great video, by the way. I really, I really like that video, Pete, the scroll the F down Thank video. you. I think a potentially interesting team, and it's really totally contingent on injury health, is the 76ers, where it's just mm -hmm. like, if they're basically just sitting and beat out the regular season and then bringing him back healthy in the playoffs, if he comes back and he is healthy, I think they are a, a very real contender. Um, so that one to me is interesting just as far as the, the odds to upside. And it's, it's basically you're making a bet of whether or not Embiid will be healthy. Um, the other one that I, I do like as much as I just said, I don't think um, the Thunder have a chance. I think that they're kind of fun in like a, you know, 
Chip and Christopher are talking in the chat about young Thunder teams making the finals, and that happened <laughs> a long time ago. Um, but they are just, they're really, really good. And they're not, they don't play like a young team. And so that's like a fun one where I think they get a discount because of how young they are. Um, but I like both of those. The, uh, uh, yeah, the Thunder one seems fun. But Christopher says, I got OKC plus 700 a month ago. Do you want to double down? I mean, they're plus 1900 <laughs> now, or is that plus 7,000 maybe? Or I they... also like the Dallas Mavericks. That's the one that I like. Okay. So what I'm hearing, guys, is you're like the guy who I was scrolling through TikTok uh, last night, and he's like, I'm putting $100 on every underdog in March Madness in round one. Uh, That's what I'm hearing, that I need to go make a sprinkle on everybody. (laughs) Well, I mean, like, really the best bet is, like, the Nuggets are plus 100, probably. (laughs) But but that's no fun. Uh, By the way, this is totally off topic. Did you guys see that the rookie and sophomores just dropped on underdog? No. Should we do a rookies and sophomores on this yeah. on this stream? I didn't. I didn't. We can, we can finish our cut. Yeah, I just I just saw that it dropped. I like it. That's Pivot. that's fun. I have a. I was saying on uh, Best Ball Breakfast on Monday, I was hoping they would drop us like a three max higher stake big board uh, contest. I'm gonna put that video out on on Twitter after this show and see if I can uh, get Numi and Hope to uh, capitulate. Now that Numi's yeah, back from his bachelor party, we can we can yeah. try to bully him a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I'm getting close. Uh, I'm at 120 drafts done for my. You're at 120 big, board. big boards. Yeah. Wow. How many and how many of those autoed or like vaguely autoed? A hundred, a hundred and yeah, a hundred or so. What um, like what have been your biggest takeaways from the auto experience? Have, have you found yourself being like, I don't have quite as many team level stacks as I would like, or I have too much concentration on players or, or you said you're still kind of mixing in some randomness to your rank. So you don't get too overloaded. I'm trying to. Um, so I'm using, I mostly use leg ups rankings. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll throw in ETRs as well. Kind of sometimes I'll do a combination of both do leg up, do ETR. Sometimes I'll let ADP influence it a bit for the most part. I've been using leg up. Um, and so that means I have, a ton of Jaleel McLaughlin, <laughs> like way too much Jaleel McLaughlin. Yeah. I've, I'm currently at 55% through 120 drafts. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting because I'll, I'll have a an idea. It's definitely shifted post free agency, where prior to free agency, uh, they were really heavy on uh, QBs and tight ends. And so I was able to do just like two max for each of those. And it was working out pretty well. But probably the hardest thing is like every once in a while, if I'm not paying attention, I'll end up with like Hertz and Lamar. And I'm like, oh, that's not great. <laughs> we, we don't want that. Um, or something like that, like spending too much capital up top on the onesies. Uh, so that's like the one thing that I have to more so monitor is am I, do I already have a really good quarterback? Let me go and just like star everyone who is not a quarterback for a while. So I yeah. don't end up with multiple. Um, Definitely miss out on some of the team stack stuff, and I'll try to do that as well. I'll, I'll go in and look and see and try to try to adjust. Um, but kind of the way that I, especially before free agency, it's like, well, one, I'm like crazy heavy on for, on rookies. I have like 50% Jermaine Burton, 30% of several other rookie wide receivers. So like kind of just with that, it's like you can't stack them anyways. Might as well just draft the shit ton auto draft. Yeah. It. it like kind of gets past that a little bit. You know what? I think – If I were, you you know, it's interesting. I'm trying to think about the randomization where it's like I would, the rookies would specifically be almost where I'd want to ratchet up the randomization the most. So you don't have 50% Jermaine Burton, like, you know, because he's probably not that different of a bet than a few of the guys going after him or whatever. Um, And yeah, that's interesting to think about like increase, like if what kind of coding it would need. I guess you would need like a tag on rookies and then like mm-hmm. have some kind of thing that says I'm going to increase my randomization on these guys. Whereas I trust the projection and rank a little bit more for these players who we already know what they are. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, and I think it definitely struggles with like guys who are getting steamed up like Xavier worthy. I have less of than I would comparatively to other rookies because he's getting a lot more esteem than these other guys. Um, but overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Some of the teams come out really, really good. Yeah. Some of them come out and you're like, oh, this team's total dog shit. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. stand a chance. Yeah. 
that's uh I have not felt, you know, if I were to max, I would probably have to go that route. But I don't know. The the fun for me with those is um seeing the kind of choose your own adventure of like, all right, these were my first few picks. And then this means it's gonna send me down this much different path. But uh I am I'll be very curious to see how it works out for you from an overall, you know, advance rate uh perspective and all that good stuff. Yeah, uh, me too. It'll, it'll be fun. Clay, hot, any? Did you have any uh, crazy Clay takes post free agency? You always got a couple hot takes up your sleeve for us. Uh, I mean, no, I'm still, I'm still, we're still, we're workshopping them. We're still in the kitchen workshopping them. Uh, I guess, like, I'm really just trying to figure out, like, can you take, you know, what to do with the Steelers' quarterback room situation and where to take them? That's been the the big dilemma for me um, so far, but. No, we're still chefing them up. I think there's still a few more dominoes left to fall. So it's really trying to get ahead of like, you know, what what are the Vikings going to do? Where is the rest of the draft shakeout going to happen? Um, and then see where some of these wide receivers are going to land still. So we're still we're still cooking them up. Yeah, I think yeah the the Steelers one. I mean, to me, it's it makes Russell Wilson like almost undraftable. Uh, because Russell Wilson's selling point is that he has like a decent floor, but has virtually no ceiling. And now he has almost no job security weeks 10 and on. Uh, whereas if, at least if you want to play the Justin Fields thesis, you say, all right, once 51% of the season has passed, then it makes so much sense for them to audition Justin Fields for the playoff stretch. See, if they are comfortable like rolling with him in yeah. 2025 and then yeah if you're talking to me about justin fields in the fantasy playoffs at a super cheap cheap price tag stack him up you know in the last round with a guy like george pickens that starts to sound kind of fun to me but man i, I just don't know how you how you can click russell wilson right now yeah i mean yeah it's it's, it's scary to click any of those guys at the moment but you know i think there's still that's where i'm interested to in see where people are settling in well, the thing too, and this goes back to kind of the sticky nature of ADP. It's like, I, I think, you know, Justin Fields should probably be like QB 32, QB 33, Gardner Minshew range, Sam Darnold range. Um, maybe you can make a case for him a few spots higher, but the, he's at like, when I drafted on Monday, he was at QB 18. When I wrote about it uh, the day, a few days before he was at QB 16, like he's moving like molasses. Like it's probably going to take yeah. two to three weeks for his ADP to ever settle partly too, because you get enough auto drafters in these, right. And someone is going to fall on the Justin Fields landmine if they're auto drafting off of ADP. And so he's probably going to be undraftable in the big board until it fills just because his ADP will never drop proportionally to like what the news actually means for him. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. The other thing too, is like, there are the scenario, like there are scenarios where I think if Russ is just, average or below average like he's going to get his crack but if like russ happens to surprise he's competent the steelers are winning games you know tomlin and arthur smith are going to be like no, no no we're we're rolling into the playoffs with russell wilson as our quarterback so there is no guarantee yeah. i think the most likely thing is though fields gets to play down the stretch yeah i just i feel like that, that's my thing with it is like the steelers almost made the playoffs last year they were in up in it until yeah. like the last two weeks of the season and yeah. so russ is I, is Russ an improvement over Kenny Pickett? I think so. I think so. Kenny Pickett. I think was so. so. Bad. Yeah, he was really bad. But like their defense is really good. Like, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but so like I, I think that they'll be in contention for the playoffs, and that that's my one concern with Fields is he has to really be better than Russ in practice, or Russ has to get hurt and he has to get a chance. Otherwise, it, it's a tough narrative because either he's coming in to replace a team that's shit, to put, replace a quarterback on a team that's shit. Or he's not going to get the job. Also, the question of how much fields do I have? Let me check. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also mean, like I Sammy Howe to the Seahawks. I was a three percent. I've drafted him. I've drafted him like four times. The the Sammy Howell to the Seahawks is so funny because it's almost like he's in the inverse spot, the exact inverse spot of where he was last year. Where it was like yeah. Jacoby Brissett's like a pretty good proxy for who Gino Smith is, except he yeah. was trying to like hold him off all year. And now, now he's going to be the one yeah. breathing down Gino's neck Gino Smith, if he yeah. slips up. But man, yeah. and talk about like thinking through 
the like the identity of the Seahawks. Like once you give Sam Howell the keys, like I don't really know how I, I know B enemy lean that way naturally, but it's like Sam Howell's gonna Sam Howell, like no matter what you're doing out there. And it's like, yeah. you know, the Seahawks with Geno, they'll play their ball control, they'll still find a way to run in their two tight end sets, all of this. And then if Sammy takes over, it's like, all right, we're fucking slinging it, baby. <laughs> It's uh, a 35 and a half attempts is a line every single game, at least. (laughs) Where it's like, wouldn't you legitimately boost up all of the pass catchers if you knew Sam Howell was starting for 17 games versus Geno Smith, just assuming more pass attempts? I think so. My only concern is like last year, the like the um, commanders receivers were like pretty shit. I mean, Curtis Samuel for his ADP was was solid, but like the other guys were not remarkable. And so that was it just because they were so bad or like what, what, what well was you know what the funny the galaxy brain is you know sam howell actually wasn't throwing outside that much and it was all over the middle to logan thomas and curtis samuel JSM season oh god yeah god, i just got wheels up I wheels know, up <laughs> sam howell jsn stack wheels up <laughs> Maybe that's the rule. If, if I have not, I don't think I've taken JSN in the big board yet. Uh, if you take JSN, you have to backdoor stack it with Sam Howell because that's how he gets <laughs> blocked. Oh man, um, I like that. Let's see. Do you got? Let's let's hop into rookies and sophomores. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be fun. Yeah, these are four person drafts. Uh, it's just um, let's see how many rounds is this? It should be quick. twelve rounds. Yeah, 12 rounds. Uh, it's a $10 price point, and we got 10 k up top here. No I was too end. fast, so I'm not going to be in this one. Okay. You're but, right. uh, 101. Well, I, I, I tried to join, but the, you, you psyoped me when you opened it up and then didn't join, so then I, <laughs> I joined and it filmed too fast. That's part of my contract with Underdog is to slow roll my entries to get people to uh, double register <laughs> in these contests. Um, we do have the 101, um, you know, looking here, it looks like this is ordered similar to the ADP, uh, Bijan first, Puka, Gibbs, then HN, but then you obviously have some positional things to consider. Yeah. Um, one, one, two, and a flex. Yeah. Like I wonder, a part of me feels like, Richardson and Stroud are maybe more valuable here. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's tough. I guess it is. Let's. It'll be. I think we should Clay. I think we should take Bijan or Puka. But then I think it'll be fun to look at the two v twos with the quarterback. Yeah, let's uh, like? let's go B. Let's go Bijan. Yeah. Yeah, running back is pretty thin now. Looking at it, like after it, the it, after that big three. Yeah. You're dropping off based on big board ADPs. You're dropping from ADP 17 with Ashan to 70 something, 80 something with Tajay Spears. Although, Andy, you have the ultimate safety net, Jaleel McLaughlin, in every draft. Yeah, let me, let me double down on that. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's keep it going. So, CJ Stroud does go 1 2 uh, to be Spurf. I'll let yeah, you guys yeah. know how my draft goes alongside it if anything okay. super different happens. Puka, Puka falls going to is, yeah. I guess the wide receiver just feels a lot deeper considering this rookie class. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the anchor running back up top is is nice. Because like at I me, mean, the, the gap from Gibbs to Spears is is pretty massive, whereas this wide receiver thing is is very smooth. Loaded. Yeah, Gibbs goes pretty nice. The Stroud Gibbs is pretty good for onesies, taking advantage of the depth. Um, yeah. I'm probably in uh, an ADP slappy here with Marv and Rashi, unless you see something else. No, we have the, let's do it. We're probably going to end up with punt QB, but I, I think like Rashi, I mean, we're still getting another, we're getting two second round picks in overall yeah. ADP here. And at this point, as much as I like Caleb Williams, I don't know if he's like separating enough from these other guys to reach over them. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I think Laporte is interesting, but I wouldn't necessarily say that, you know, ceiling wise to Rice, you're taking 
him over. Ice. Yeah, he, Laporta I also struggle with because he's, you know, right now he's at 10. And I have to imagine that's just because of his pick in in the big board. But he has the positional differences there where, like, if, if yeah. Laporta was a, was a wide receiver in the big board, he would not have the ADP that he has. And so I'm not totally sure that he should be going above some of those other guys given that there is no tight end spot. That's a, that's a good point. I mean, that a lot of that value, I think you have to apply a decent discount. I mean, he goes in what the fourth round late third sometime. So you're probably looking at like a two round discount, like guys like Jane Reed should go ahead of him. But I think maybe like once Jane reads off the board, I guess I don't find this necessarily that crazy. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I agree with that logic. I think it's just like he can also he has the the role and the volume where it just consistently. Well, it's funny he fell all the way, so we could. I think we should grab Jaden Daniels um, okay. to give us some upside at quarterback. Um, we probably one of Daniels or May. I think we should take. I'm fine. With, yeah, that's fine. Unless you wanted, I didn't know if you wanted to get a super aggressive and double tap positional again, but um, no, say Daniels. I think it's smart, and then um. I mean, do you like Reed? You want to go for Reed? JSN and then try to I can't, get another I can't quarterback? With JSN unless Sam, is Sam Howell in the pool? No. Um, no. I, I, I like here. Reed here. All right, let's do Reed. So taking a more macro look at this, who are the potential stacks? You have Stroud and Tank Dell. Richardson and Downs. Yeah. You have... Um, is anyone with Caleb Williams? No, right? Unless they draft a wide receiver. Caleb will yeah, they would have to draft somebody. Jalen Daniels. You could do Daniels or May and then take um uh who's on the Patriots? Um Demario Douglas. Demario late. Mm -hmm. Um are you buying that the the Patriots or or um the commanders taking Daniels over May, that rumor? No, but to be honest, I know so little about yeah. the uh, like college football that like basically all of my knowledge of it is like listening to like the your streams, the underdog streams, and podcasts and like yeah. ETR stuff. And so, kind of like whatever is coming out in the rumor mills there is basically what I know. But I it I don't think I buy it, but. I wouldn't be shocked and I'm, I'm trying not to put too much weight in anything that I hear right now. Um, I kind of like the may, um, do you want to go to the B here? Yeah. 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 I think getting these two makes sense. And then do you have a, a running back or a wider, I think it definitely wide receiver is where the value is. Um, I'll let you pick any of these guys. Uh, I mean, I do like downs a lot. Um, yeah. If yeah, or we could go Kincaid or Bowers or Franklin. Yeah. But I mean, I'm I don't I'm pretty indifferent. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, I feel like Bowers is fun. Let's go Bowers. Yeah. All right, so we got uh, Jane Daniels, Drake May at quarterback, Bijan holding down the fort at running back, Marvin Harrison Jr., Rashi Rice, Jaden Reed, Brock Bowers. Um, not too bad. We got the QB oh, two and three, squad. the wide receiver one, and the tight end one in this class. Fun little squad. Mm. Yeah, I, I think this is true. Uh, Caleb Williams with uh, Roma Dunze potentially being live for a stack. I just wonder how much they're acquiring of Keenan Allen. Is if if they're thinking about it like, okay, we can now get maybe even another wide receiver in round two or something. And we don't need to spend this other top pick on a wide receiver. That that's my only thing about how they might view it. Paul says, who did JSN murder our fantasy teams? <laughs> that's who he murdered. <laughs> um, Josh Downs comes back to us. I'm certainly yeah. cool with that. Let's hit it. And then we, you want to hit a run of the running back or. Yeah. Um, um i do i'm not do. like a, a blake corm guy but i i do think he's going to have a chance to get pretty decent volume year one yeah yeah i i concur let's do that 
everyone it's like you can't tell that the, the charger thing is just so obvious but like whichever one of these <laughs> running backs go to the cowboys and whichever one goes to the chargers they are going to be going significantly higher uh than where they are yeah. right now no i mean he seems to have chargers written all over him i would just mm -hmm. i saw i saw rudman Redman fired a take on Twitter the other day that uh, Blake Corum is his favorite uh, rookie running back for fantasy purposes this year. So our squad here, Jane Daniels, Drake May, Bijan, Blake Corum, Marvin Harrison, Rashi Rice, Jane Reed, Brock Bowers, Josh Downs. What are you cooking with over there, Andy? Yeah, so I like I punted QB pretty hard. And so I started out uh, – HN and Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, and then just kind of ran down wide receiver with Zay Flowers, Roma Dunze, Dalton Kincaid, Tajay Spears, and then went back to back QBs with Drake May and Bryce Young. Uh, I'm, I'm at the four or five turn for context. Um, nice. And then I decided to go with the third QB since I punted QB so much and took Will Levis and Keon Coleman. Nice. So I'm looking like I'm going to have a 3 3 6. Uh, Clay, I think we can take Demario Douglas. We should be insured a stack with either Jaden yep. or Drake May, and then Go with that. I like either Roshan or um, Keaton Mitchell. Yeah, I was eyeing Keaton. Let's scroll the f down. Yeah, it's fun. Keaton. Hopefully, he comes with... back strong. Maybe we could potentially. I know there's how many of these drafts have taken place here. Two eighty three. I guess. I would like to think we might be the first people to have selected Keaton Mitchell in the rookies. I just took Julio McLaughlin in my last pick. So. <laughs> I, hey, you got to stay on brand. Yeah. Stay on brand. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is what's so funny. Like uh, Office Patina here saying Harbaugh is drafting Quorum at five and getting him 400 carries. I dead ass think if we had a Bijan Robinson level prospect go back to the years like Zeke and Leonard Fournette yeah. all went super early. Yeah. Like the chart, like Harbaugh would be running to the podium to select that guy in the top 10. Yeah. I, uh, I totally agree. That, that'd be so funny. One thing on the, uh, the point with the commanders, um, I mean, considering they did trade away Sam, Howe, you don't have the awkwardness of the two, you know, former teammates being in the same quarterback room together. So they got, a little more flexibility for drafting Drake May if they so chose. Um, but it's, yeah, I don't know. It seems a little fishy. Yeah. Um, These are fun. I like this. Uh, they are. They're, they're I love quick. the rookie and sophomores. Yeah. And I, I do think, like, um, you know, I'm, just, I'm I have a video coming out about the big board later this week and I talked to uh, a lot of people about, like, you know, their favorite edges uh, in that contest. And, you know, one of them that's no longer available is getting to hop in a contest right when it opens. So a lot of this video is talking mm -hmm. about what are the things you can do now. Oh, my bad, Clay. I didn't realize we had one more pick. Um, for some reason, I thought we were done. Uh, you want to get your boy Roche on here? You liked him before? Yeah, let's hit it. Why not? <laughs> let's get... Uh... Uh, I completely <laughs> forgot about it. Sorry. I, that's so good. I was like 10, 11 turn. Um, anyways, what was I going to say? Uh, but... Getting in this draft, like these ADPs are will move uh, very quickly here because they are just ported over, I believe, probably from the big board stuff right now. So a uh, good time to uh, to hop in and get that early edge before the ADPs refresh. Um, I need you guys to vamp for me. I've been just chugging water today, and uh, I need to go to the bathroom real quick, but I'll be right back. All right. We'll do. Hey, who's your, what's your hot take for tonight's NBA slate? Let's see. Let me. I'm actually just about to rip another batch of ten drafts. Let's pull up my ADPs. My most owned player of the night is Kyle Kuzma, which is basically just a, I'm drafting the guy who's Q tag situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my second most owned player is also Jordan Poole. Uh, so oh, definitely right. on the on the on the Wizards tonight, which is a terrifying premise. Um, yeah, always a fun time. Yeah, I guess I haven't been keeping up. Let me refresh and see if ADP has changed. I know the second highest total on this. Slate okay, tonight. so earlier Wemby was higher in ADP than Jokic. I have Jokic above him, but that's uh -huh. now Jokic is uh, is above him now. Um, you have Luca playing tonight. 
Yeah. It's like, you will. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I have a lot of Devin Vassell, which is interesting. Um, is, uh, is Wimby competing for the one-on-one with Jokic? Is that a regular occurrence or is that just a matchup specific thing? Uh, it's basically gotten to that point. So tonight is it's Luca, Wemby, and Jokic. So it's like probably the three. If if you had every player playing, um, typically like the only other guy you'd add in there is Giannis. Those would be, and then SGA like right after him. Sometimes SGA is above. Um, but so like Luca's one to, one of one one on one tonight, and he's he's kind of established himself as as the over top overall pick, pretty pretty handily. Um, yeah. And they're playing the Spurs tonight. And so I think part of what people had Jokic behind Wemby tonight is um, the Nuggets are playing the Timberwolves, who have a, a very good defense. They have Rudy Gobert. Um, but I still think that Jokic is just, you know, he's a little bit too good to, to not be drafting. All right. I, I just hopped us in a, a night nightly draft here. I hopped in the, uh, the breakaway for the Tuesday main slate. Single entry. 1k to first i ain't competing with all oh you. they made a single entry normally it's five entry is it nice yeah there you go you only get one crack at beating my lineup so adp has it yeah luca Jokic, wemby is there a pretty big tier gap from wemby down to edwards yeah at least for me there is i i have edwards projected personally 10 fantasy points less than Wemby, um, which is like a pretty big drop. I have Wemby at like 55 and Edwards at 45. But like I said, I my my projection sheet hates Anthony Edwards. Um, mm -hmm. So he is not even – I have several other players just on raw projection higher than him. Whether or not that's right, it's probably wrong, but that's, that's what my what my sheet says. Did you, you see the dunk the other night, yeah. Anthony Edwards dunk? I saw the uh, – I've seen the photo. Uh, I've actually not seen the video, but that looked insane. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, the between the block he had and then the dunk, like back-to-back -back recent highlights have been pretty in insane. All right, so of course Andy gets to capture the end of the uh, the elite tier, and we're on the outside looking in here, Clay. Sorry, right, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Wow, my guy Fred Van Vliet still in the mix. You love to see it. Yeah, so their their highest fantasy scorer on a night to night basis, Shangun. Um, he is uh, out for the rest of the season, and so Van Vliet Van Vliet's uh, taken over kind of a lot of that. Even with Grady Dick on the come up. All right, so we got six round draft here. What uh, what was your what was your contest you won the other night, Andy? I, I it was just a good night. I think it was actually my might not might not be my best night ever, but it was it was up there. Uh, but I took down the main event, and I also got third place in it. Um, so that was a pretty nice combo. Um, but. They had like some other pretty high finishes kind of throughout the other throughout the rest of the contests. Um, Let's go, Kyrie, Pete. Okay. But yeah, it's been a pretty solid, solid month for me. I'm like month and a half on underdog, which is nice. It's been uh, giving me a nice bankroll for best ball season to auto draft millions of teams. Guys, I can't believe this is how I had to find out that uh, my guy Fred Van Vliet is no longer defending the wall up north. Uh, <laughs> someone was oh, yeah. where you guys get yeah, tell me. Houston. God. And, and then I get sniped on him. Jeez, what a brutal run brutal. out. Uh, Clay, who are we taking? Uh, Palo. Okay. Dropped 10 dimes the other night, according to Underdog News Alerts. Hello. Man, I still have hundreds upon hundreds of Fred Van Vliet top shot moments. Shout out to uh to Mike. It seems like Floaty's been doing pretty well. I saw something yeah. that they're at like twenty-five percent of uh 
of the NBA Top Shot volume for the last like couple weeks, which is pretty sweet. It seems like uh, I hear hype about Top Shot, and it does seem like the new stuff is, that's dropping is doing well, but like none of the old bags uh, are moving whatsoever because I went and checked yeah. the account value, and it was not pretty. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm I'm quite ready to get back into the top shot streets. Uh, that feels feels like a big ask. Um, uh, who the hell do I want to try? Clay, uh, John wants us to get wild in this single entry here. Hmm. Okay, John. Uh, let's, uh, let's go, Jabari Smith Jr. Okay. John, you don't flip the board in the third round. Flip the board later on. Man. Scroll the F down is no longer cool, so John's now saying flip the board. He's he's moved on (laughs) now that it's gone mainstream. It's been co-opted by a big underdog. All right, we're back on the clock, Clay. Don't let the chat Uh... rattle you. Draft with your heart. (laughs) Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, man. Let's go, Amin Thompson. I'm gonna let's just let's chalk it up. Look at I don't have a um, I don't have a read on his uh on Houston rotation, but we'll go with it. Once Fred realizes he left his heart in Toronto and self withdraws from the game tonight, the usage for Jabari and Thompson is just gonna go through the roof. That's my thesis, Clay. I like it. Mm. I got to do some research on the slate. Flying blind. And for what it's worth, Amon Thompson is who I would have picked if I was you. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll take All right. it. Yes, Nez, I'm in the dailies, and I just learned that Fred Van Vliet is no longer on the Raptors. It's been a, an emotional draft for me. <laughs> I'm like drafting on hard mode. In that my current rankings that I have in are not my real rankings because they're like adjusted based on my most recent exposure updates. So I'm like in my Google sheet trying to actually figure out who my highest ranked player is versus what I have on my sheet. Here it's we go. Challenge. This is how we win, Clay. Catch him with his pants down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Clay, two more picks here. I need you to focus. Okay. All right, all right. Let's lock in. Uh, let's go. Um, okay, let's go. Jeremy Sochan. Okay. And let's also go. Don't tip our hand. Keep it a little close to the vest here. A lot of stream snipers these days. Trying to make their name, trying to tilt a streamer, immortalize themselves in the NBA Daily Stream Hall of Fame. Can't give them what they want. All right. I think we've vamped just enough. If you speak slowly and bleed this clock to about five seconds and then reveal it, we should be in the clear. We'll see if it... All right. He goes read. We're, We're clear. All right. Go hit Dennis Schroeder. Okay. Wow, at the top of the queue. I hope we're not duped. Please don't dupe us, guys. Please. Uh, he was trying to make it duped in a how many people single entry lineup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you get duped in a 228-person <laughs> contest. <laughs> See, John, John rattled me, man. He came in here, second round. He said, flip the board on its head. Oh, I like man. it. No, that team, that team, uh, yeah. Oh, we did it. We threaded the needle. Yeah. This is T Bagging's right. Please. <laughs> um yeah. please do for draft. Uh, let's uh let's get some uh some some champions going here. Oh wait, is that what they call it in Massachusetts now? Yeah, it like just switched. I didn't even get a memo. I was hoping that a carrier pigeon would deliver something to me and say, Hey, Peter, you no longer Welcome play pick them. You play champions. Welcome to That's the party. funny. It's, it's still called pick them in New York. I'm so, I didn't even know, like, I didn't even hear 
any legal headwinds specifically to this in Massachusetts, like you're hearing in other states. I wonder if they were just getting out in front of it. Probably. Oh, so it's peer to peer now here. Okay. Yeah. Um, any guys that you're way ahead of market on tonight, Andy? Um, wizards. The the wizards guys are who I'm, which is a terrifying thing. Um, the, but yeah, the two biggest guys for me are Kyle Kuzma and uh, Jordan Poole. But Kuzma is particularly because he's questionable. So I'm not even sure how good of the value is there on his stuff. Do they have his fantasy points? Um, yeah, there we go. 39, 39, 39. Let me see. I, that, that looks right on the dot to me. Okay. So I think he probably has a pretty fair projection. He's just sliding on underdog because of his Q tag. Uh, you want to look at Jordan Poole? Yeah, he is at... That where's fantasy? I don't see points. fantasy points? Yeah, I don't see, see fantasy him. points. I see twenty five and a half regular points. It feels high. Twenty six and a half points plus assists. Yeah, I don't see fantasy. Thirty point five points, rebounds, and assists. Neither of those are incredibly points. enticing yeah. to me. Someone in the chat was shouting Corey Kispert's name earlier. <laughs> Corey. Uh, he's all, I mean, dude, these lines are sharp. I mean, basically, you know? like 95% of the Washington Wizards team is out, so there's just only so many guys who who can play. Yeah, um, they only have three guys up right now. Anything else we should, uh, Nez, Nez in the chat, Gafford? I like, uh, I like Jalen Green's fantasy points at 38. Or 39.85. I think that that's pretty good. Okay. I have him like 40, 41. So it's a little bit low, I think. Uh, where is he? Okay. You said you had it at about 45 and he's at 39.85? Uh, not at 45. I have him at, I have him at 41 and a half. Okay. And the different places I aggregate have him anywhere from 39 to 45 kind of. I'm not sure what ETR has in that. Let's see. They have them at they have them at forty and a half. So they have them, yeah. Just above it. But I do I do like him tonight. What do you have Gafford? Nez Nez likes Gafford in the chat. Uh do I see a Gafford. fantasy points? Which one, Nez? I don't see the fantasy points. I like Gafford as well tonight. I think you could probably do points and rebounds and feel decent about it. Yeah. I don't mind that. There's uh the the most unspicy of spicy spice on Wimby five and a half blocks <laughs> steals, which for him is a walk in the park. But you're not it's not necessarily great value per se. How what is it? Um uh, it's like 1.1 1. 1 spice on you to win B. I'm, I'm done for Meech's assists. Meech's assists Meech's. over six. All right. I'm locking this in. We're doing a three burger here. Jalen Green, Gafford, and Meech's. Green, Gafford, Meech's. I like it. All right. Here it is if you want to tail. I don't even know how the tailing links works for uh, champions. <laughs> the champions. Be a champion. Um. All right, dudes. Uh, good luck tonight in your uh, in your drafts, Andy. What? Uh, Thank you. Tell the, tell the people what I, I still got to check out the. Uh, you got the new salary cap stuff live. Yeah. So we have. If you're playing an NBA, I'd say check it out. It's uh, we're still running really small contests right now, just kind of ironing out kinks and all that. But you know, it's uh, it's been pretty fun so far. It's salary capped NBA. Uh, no positions, but it plays a lot like FanDuel or DraftKings does. Um, we're not doing late swaps. I don't like late swaps. So no no late swaps. If you pick an injured player and they don't play, that's part of your risk profile. So deal with it. Uh, might eventually swap over to like the underdog, kind of get the next best available player thing, but going to keep experimenting and stuff. But yeah, it's, it's been pretty fun so far. We're doing single-entry winner takes all for smaller slates right now 
Um, so it's like 25 bucks to win 250 currently, nice. but um, hopefully in the next couple of days should be potentially partnering with someone who you all know who does NBA content. Um, try to get those contest prizes up and get some more people on. Um, but yes, yeah, I'm pretty fun so far. And we also, it's no rake, no, never will be rake. They're, they are 100% rake free games. So nice. it's 10 people, $25 a person pays out 250 to first. Very nice. Check that out on IKB. Clay, what do you got going on? Just, uh, you know, still in the trenches. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'll have, you know, uh, more, more to come soon on my front with the beer stuff. So we're getting close. I'm super excited. Yeah. Oh, Andy, I wanted to ask you because I listened to your podcast. Um, uh, we do a little, uh, and you had that guy NFT Nick on, and now he's like blown up, right? <laughs> like I see yeah. him on my timeline nonstop. So it's really funny because I didn't know him that well. I, I like I I known him a bit prior to doing the podcast, but I thought he was pretty annoying. Um, so I mean the the personality that he puts on on Twitter even prior to all the choose rich stuff. Like he's, he definitely well, is like it's in your what, face. It's where man's was headed. Uh, if, if he was still around these days. Yeah. But like, that was one of those things where having him on that podcast, like it was so clear to me that none of this was an accident. Like he is very intentional about the content he puts out and doing it all the time. And just like being like very intentional about all that stuff. And so it was really funny to see him blow up. I'm happy for him. He, uh, I think it's well deserved. Yeah. I mean, he like really blew up. Cause then he was on, uh, portnoy brought him on his like trading show or whatever um what is it what is his thing other than being uh, an influencer what does is he sell anything or run anything yeah so he has uh um a media company like a media company so okay. they do like daily crypto media um twitter spaces mm. and then they do like video content um so like the choose rich stuff is something he's done now, but he like he had some really funny videos. You, you may have seen like he did one where it was like the Solana soldiers, and he like went around to people in Washington Square Park and was like, "Do you want one dollar or one Solana?" This is when Solana was like ninety bucks, and he's in like a full like army getup and yelling at people and stuff. He does That's he funny. does pretty good content. I, like I think his like there aren't very many people who make actually funny crypto content yeah. videos and shorts, and I think he is one of them. He wrote yeah. like a whole rap about SBF when his trial was going down, and it was like he went down there to the Bahamas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but so yeah, so it's just like media stuff. They have like an NFT project as well uh, on Solana, um, but not like explicitly selling anything right now. There you go. Choose rich. I did die. Someone posted like, um, who is the uh, the camel? uh from the cigarette company mascot so oh, yeah, I, yeah. I know that was very good um all right appreciate you guys hanging out for the club here on tuesdays uh if you guys want some more underdog drafts i am doing often on the clock with the badge bros tomorrow that's gonna be at 1 30 generally do that at two we're gonna do that at 1 30 tomorrow uh we'll talk some more nfl free agency fallout hop in a big board draft who knows maybe we'll rip uh rookies and sophomores as well and then, uh, like I said, make sure you're checking out the Deposit Kingdom YouTube channel. Going to be ramping up the frequency of videos over there. Have the Scroll the F Down video, uh, which published last week. And then I'm going to have a big board video here as we enter the home stretch of drafting in these pre-NFL draft contests. And uh, yeah, good luck in all of your NBA stuff. Tonight, we'll be back uh, in future weeks here on the club. Peace.